Hi there, so we're going to do a quick demonstration of using a pulse arc welder to weld a molar band onto an RPE. And this technique is going to be true for any band to other larger object application. Um, forgive me, this is a very used RPE. I've used it on many trainings, but these principles will still apply. So when I'm lining up my RPE when, I'm, when it's on the model, we're just going to pretend that it's on the model in this case. I don't have a, a plaster 3D printed one with me, but I like having it in the middle as most as I can because then I'm far away from the edges, which is where we are start have most of our problems when we're welding. So I'm going to be using 10 watt seconds, and this this uh, application and this support uh, for this is true for any of the welders um, because all of them can reach 10 watt seconds or WS as it's shown on the screen. So if we go over here, I like to do 45 to 60 degrees angle of attack so that I have a proper flow of metal. So if I don't know exactly where I need to hit, then in order to avoid damaging the molar band, I like hitting away from the band and putting a bias. We can see I did that first weld, so I kind of measure that that weld, and I'll walk my weld in until. Sorry, let's line this up better. And so I'm going to start on the end here instead. So I'm going to slowly walk that weld in. I'm going to adjust to a 60 degree angle of attack. Then slowly walking that in. Mm -hmm. Got some bonding there, and maybe I need to walk up my my power because I'm not quite getting <laughs> enough flowing. Yeah, and so I'm going to walk up my power to 15 watt seconds instead. So we're going to start this process again. Line this up, and then you put stylus putting a 45 degree angle to start with, and then I'm going to put a bias towards that larger wire. There we go. Nice flow. Now we can decide to do this in one of two major ways. We can do a few couple welds until it's locked into place and then drip solder on. Because usually we're using this to secure these while they're on a 3D printed model, which we can't put a torch to because we'll destroy the, the, uh, the case. Um, so I'll show you this way, and then we'll do a seam weld. Um, sometimes, for the comfort of the patient, I prefer dripping solder because it's more time efficient in order to do so. Um, these welds are going to be strong enough to hold the smaller band, and that dripping of solder is purely for their comfort and the amount of time that uh, is necessary to, to yield a good result. So another thing to keep in mind is our sharpness of the electrode is going to play a massive part in how well the metal flows and how well our welds look. So we may need to maintain this a couple of times during our full weld application. So now I'm going to go to the opposite end of where I started my weld. So I started here and I come down here and I'm going to make a, a weld similar. I'm going to walk down. I'm going to try again, but at a 60 degree angle. That's kind of flowing. I'm going to ground this down, so I'm worried that there's not enough. Yeah, there we go. So now that's pretty secure. And I'd be happy with that enough to take it off the, the, the model in order to drip solder or to secure it on this other side. And I do prefer that, where I'll do a seam weld, pull it off the model, finish it up on the other side. So let's do that now. If we're doing a seam, I like putting my electrode on the inside cor corner towards the wire and just touch, touch the previous weld. Because what happens when we do that 
is we're using the surface tension of that previous well to flow our, yes, I, our energy. This might be helpful when grounding a lot closer. So I think that's what what's fighting us here. There we so go. What we say, here's the thing. Is it so required? now, right? Can you weld without it? Yes. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. What happens? What no, happens just when you weld without it? Flowing it all the way over. Inside and outside oxidizes it. And so then, boom, we got we got good. Uh, very good stuff going and i'm like way i'm way high on this so that's that's my bad for this but then we're going to go to the opposite side so we can come over here and then we can walk our, our weld down one or two bond it down, down there to hold it in place and then we can flow that over and we're going to continue this until we reach the end. There are some options Now we're going to get to a point, right, where we're going to need to go into here, and that's where this the dripping solder comment usually comes in, because I don't want to trap food in there. And so that, that can cause some some concern here, right? And then also at the very end. So what I'll do is um, I come in an angle. And you can see I have some evidence of some melting um, on the edge of the molar band. So again, we can fix that up in post. Clean up. And that's why having it centered is more important. So that looks all well and fine. So once I get that at, at a yes. near finished state, and it'll last depending on the tank you get. Let's just keep on going. There's a gap here, so I'm I'm wondering if I could bridge the gap, which kind of did there. There we go. Last, so pretty happy with that. Now <clears throat> I have a previous weld on the inside here. Um, I kept that there so that I can show you how to smooth sure, down. So if we're bringing it, smoothing it down, sorry, sorry. Here. So then I want to come want perpendicular to that edge, and then I'm going to increase my power in here. And I increase it to about forty. And so we're just going to go over the top. And what that's going to do is we're going to take that hard edge and we're going to round it down. And again, this, this technique can save you a lot on, on your post work. And since I have an angle restriction, I'm just going to hit it on both sides. So those electrodes are made of tungsten. They're super there we go. Much than steel. So that can um, help yeah, my. Like, not really my, my area, but, um, really you there we go. Right here. And I'm going to be pretty cautious on this side just because we can damage that molar band if we're, if we're too close. So I'm going to bring it back down you to 15. And then if we needed to add fill wire, let's say this is 016, what I would do is I would lay my fill wire down in the valley of what I wanted to fill. And then I would do welds over the top. Yeah, there is a, I recommend, so there's two And I would zigzag, so, so I can accidentally hit that. So it's following the same principles where I'm hitting the wire. And I think we're getting to the point where sharpening our electrode would make sense. So I'm going to place this down. We're going to pull off our nose cone. 
loosen up our collet, slide that electrode out. And I'm going to be using the Sunstone Pilot, which has these fun little pilot holes. That's where it gets its name, like over here, which controls the different angles that you can put on this electrode. I'm going to put it at the 15 degree angle. So when I slide it in, it's going to go against here. Turn that on. And then when I rotate it, and I'm just going to slowly rotate it. There we go. So now we can see sharp, sharp electrode. Near factory um, finish. So, well, factory like. I mean, factory ones are not really, really sharp. And so I put my yes. my nose cone here against the brass or steel collet nut. And then if my yeah, electro like tip is better. within these two grooves, then we're good to go. Put that back on, clicks into place, Correct. and then we can resume. And then we can, where you can I'm going to start on this side. And, there's and now you can see my welds are going to be a little stronger. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful. And again, I'm going to zigzag back and forth. So far side, and then I'm going to be touching the inside of that little divot to flow it over to the molar band. And then You have to have blunted electrodes. Are very sharp. So that'll work perfectly. There you go. So all you'll do like that. And then when we're done with the wire, we can wiggle it back and forth till it breaks off. And I just do another weld, smooth that out. I can see that more wires needed. And I would continue this until we feel like we have an appropriate amount of fill wire to make that smooth to our liking. And again, I'm just taking my time, wiggling back and forth the wire to break it off, and then I'll do another weld just to smooth it all out. There we go. Again, continuing this, I'm not going to do it on this side. But I can continue oh, yeah. this until I'm in a space that makes me happier. Now, let's say we go like this, right? And yeah, I wasn't able to bust a hole through that. Let's say my electrode was just a little bit sharper. Or my energy, I think I might be able to do it with 20 watt seconds. This happens. With this technology, unfortunately, we're kind of we're kind of stuck, right? We can't we can't really repair that um, and have it be worth it. It'd be better to just take off the smaller band and, and start over on this particular section. We can use a diamond disc to smooth out that wire. But if we needed to repair this this hole, we could essentially do it if we involved a laser welder, and we have other videos showcasing. That's dental and ortho applications using a laser. But, there's a bunch but there's a lot of, um, if you have more questions or concerns about how this is done, keep in mind that right, so we, we want to do, basically you'll just do that sharp electrodes. When you're wanting to resharpen. We want to make sure that our right, angle so of attack is video. about 45 to, to 68 degrees with a bias towards around, the the larger of the two things, so that the flow is flowing towards uh, the, lar the smaller piece. I was grounding on the larger wire. I like grounding on whatever's larger. And I also like um, grounding it as close as I can to my weld area. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help wherever I can. So I would get.